Yo, what's up guys? Easy Company here, and today I'm going to be going over my Mesa Stream of Consciousness Atlas Map Strategy. Pull up the tree here. So, naturally, Mesa, this league, is tier 14, so some tips would be using Orbs of Horizon until you get Mesa. That'll still proc your Eater at tier 14. And then also using your Harbinger Orbs to get T14s. Which you can then roll into Mesa maps if they don't go to a Beachhead. So that is one tip. It took about 12 to get three Mesas. That's not bad. They'll be tier 14. I do T16 farming with shadow shaping, so I'll go over that later. So why Mesa? It's just a fast layout and an easy boss. It's really just a giant circle, then an inner circle, and the boss will be dead center. And this strategy is going to focus on ambush, a little bit of essence, Searing Exarch, Harvest, Expedition, and the Mirror Tablet, which is the League Mechanic. So with the Atlas Tree, you're guaranteed a Strong Box and an Essence, and Essences will be one tier higher with Amplified Energies. And we're going to be blocking every single League content except for Delirium. Expedition and Harvest and we're going to be using like I said stream of consciousness so we're going to be seeing Expedition and Harvest quite often I would say one in three maps you're at least going to see an Expedition or Harvest with all these blocked mechanics I'll go over shadow shaping later this is how I can farm mesas at T16 and Wrath of the Cosmos is our third and final Jumbo node on the tree, which will give us more altars and um, more Eldritch currencies. Not really altars, but... So we're going to take every single Harvest node. There's not one Harvest node I didn't take. And we're going to take mostly all of the Expedition. I didn't take these top two. And I didn't take this little expedition node here in the center. And we're going to take all the strong box nodes except for cartographers. And these two pack size nodes we don't take. But we will take the operative and tamper proof. What else? Let's see. We're going to take all the quality or quantity nodes in the center. And all of the increased map effect modifiers at the top of the tree. We'll take all of those because that's going to boost our item quantity, item rarity, and pack size. We're going to take all map related Searing Exarch nodes. So you have a 10% chance to get double progress when you encounter the Searing Exarch. And when we first encounter the Searing Exarch pack, there's a 50% chance to spawn an altar right at the start, which is really good. And then we'll take all of these Exarch ones here for more pack size and more ember drops. So the setup, there's really just four steps. You're going to roll a map to what you can handle. Then you'll go and apply sextants to your watchstones and you can seal up any of them that might sell or if you want to save some for later use compasses and seal them after that you'll just place in here make sure you have the exarch selected and ambush for 4c so we'll get four boxes so 1c per box added to the map and since we're going stream of consciousness we don't have to worry about fragments or scarabs we could just sell any that we get keep them because you're not going to be using them. 
and you can select a master if you wish. So if you run out of mesas, this is why I go shadow shaping. With shadow shaping, you can effectively block off maps so they can't drop. So we'll pick, if you're going to do this, if you're having a hard time sustaining mesas, you can block off arsenal, forking river, marshes, port, and underground sea. That way you can bounce between sulfur vents and mesa. I'm pretty sure you can get the dragon's heart to drop in sulfur vents. And also the map is an open layout. And for sulfur vents, you just head north, and the boss room is always north of the portal. Additionally, you can use some unmaking orbs and go wandering path. I'm going to link my shadow shaping tree. So you'll bounce between two trees that I link in the description. If you go wandering path, we'll unspec out of all of these major nodes. You'll get like 20 some nodes to refund and all. You take these minor, or I call them major nodes out. And you'll want to get 100% chance with the adjacent map drop chance. Once you get 100%, you're going to guarantee a Mesa map to drop. There is rare instances where it doesn't drop. Like there might be a rare pack that converts your map into like a flask or something. Not sure, but it is bugged. You're not guaranteed, but at 100%, there's only a few maps where you may not get a Mesa. So once you put enough in to get 100% adjacent map chance, then any remaining points you can put into map drop duplication. I think I get like 25, around 25% map dupe and 100% adjacent chance. So what do we sell for profit in this strategy? What is so good about this strategy? Well, Mesa is very fast. You'll be seeing Harvest. So at the time of this recording, the Vivid goes for around 2800 to 3000 for a divine the wild or the purple life force goes for around 5000 for a divine and the blue goes for around 6000 to 7000 for a divine i tend to use the blue though because you can swap delirium orbs timeless emblems you can reforge crit change elder fragments or you can add weapon enchantments to your weapons if you're saving up for some. Like, I need to save up my blue and put an, ench an enchantment on this. For sure. And with Expedition, you can either sell or run your logbooks. I tend to always run mine. If you get an instance like this on the top one, the Battleground Graves, it guarantees the boss to spawn. I'll split this, and I can either sell both, run both, or whatever I want. But the ones that guarantee a boss, like this one for Knights of the Sun, that's going to sell for a lot of money. And then Eldritch Embers. At the time of this recording, they're around 80 grand embers for a divine i sold 160 embers last night for two divine and with the exarch you can sell the invitations or run them if you sell them at the time of the recording on the low end they're around 150 c each and then with essences you can either sell or craft those like use them on items to craft and with strong boxes, since we are specced into strong box and we are going to use the map mod for 4C, it's mostly up to RNG, but you can get duplicated divination cards and duplicated currencies to come out of your boxes. Actually, had a divine drop and it dropped two instead, so it's 
pretty big payoff. It's mostly RNG when it comes up to the currency and the cards, but it does add up over time. So yeah, guys, that is my strategy for Mesa. I'm going to link both trees below so you can sustain your Mesa maps using Wandering Path. And then when you're running your Mesas with Stream of Consciousness, you can just turn all this low investment strategy into profit. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll probably be doing another one in the series going over bossing. Peace.